Good evening, I'm Sam Shane and get ready to get wet. We've got a big storm moving in. In fact, for the first time in more than a month, we are going to be looking at some significant rainfall throughout the region. These are pictures from back in December where we saw a lot of localized flooding. And with these pictures, we head off to Ian Schwartz and Dave Bender in the Weather Center. And I guess the first question right off the bat is, are we going to see more of these pictures again? Uh, we certainly might. And you know, it's got to be a big story when you got two weather guys in <laughs> yeah, one exactly. weather center. All right. <laughs> so we're talking about you know this atmospheric river and we're talking about waves of moisture. So we'll have at least one coming in here. Most likely this one will be rolling through as we go through late Thursday into Friday. There's another one out here which could be coming through as early as Saturday. Exactly. And then beyond that we're talking wave three. So several hits from these systems and they're part of a word that we use sometimes around here. Yep. An atmospheric river. So what is that? What does that mean? Well, tonight we are asking the question, why are atmospheric rivers so important and potentially so dangerous? On a dry, sunny day, the Mary family enjoys a stroll on the K Street Mall. He hasn't seen a good winter in his life, yeah. so he doesn't know the difference. Little Yuba is about to experience his first big rain, all courtesy of an atmospheric river heading this way. Rivers, they go by on the ground. That's how I traditionally learn rivers. Yeah, good point. But hydrologist Alan Haynes says they start with a storm near Alaska in the Pacific Ocean. It comes across the Pacific and, and it's on a large enough scale, hundreds of miles, that it's able to tap into deep moisture in the tropics. The bright colors on this satellite loop show an atmospheric river winding up, heading toward the coast. Moisture is channeled in a narrow path aimed right at California. When it hits the coastal mountains and the Sierra, it is wrung out of the clouds and brings us big rains. They produce like 30 to 50 percent of the annual precipitation. But too much of them can be a bad thing. Atmospheric rivers are responsible for just about every devastating Northern California flood, like this one that rocked Yuba Sutter in 97. In 1861, it rained for 44 days, flooding Sacramento and turning K Street into a waterway and causing the state capital to move to San Francisco. Haynes says we usually see half a dozen events a year, but lately that number's dwindled to two. Not good news because everything we do depends on these rivers in the sky. We kind of rely on them to reach our, refill our reservoirs, to put down um, some high elevation snow and use that water when it melts off in the spring and summer. And we are gonna be getting more for those reservoirs. Look at some of these forecasted rain totals. That is uh, up until Thursday midnight, and then we really hit the gas. I mean, yeah, I mean, and that's all the way up until just like one o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. So that's barely into wave two nearly three and a half inches around Sacramento, four inches around Marysville and Yuba City, and in excess of an inch all the way down into the northern San Joaquin Valley. So these reservoirs are going to go up. Absolutely. And this is just in about three or four days. Yeah. In January, we were supposed to see the, all of that rain in the entire month. And I ran the numbers, and if we get as much as that 3.6 around Sacramento, we could be at 105% of where we should be for rainfall. So we'll play catch-up ball very quickly. Sam, back Absolutely. over to you. All right, guys.